Behind me right here, you see all of the types of fish that are now in the Valheim game. And as you can tell, tons have been added since the Mistlands update. On top of that, in this chest right here, we have all of the bait that we can get in the game. And it used to be just this one type of bait, meaning there are now eight new different types of bait. On screen right now, you're seeing the spreadsheet on what the different bait has been used to catch. And I want to say this isn't a comprehensive guide. This is just stuff I've tested and I know works. If you do want a full guide on fishing, I'll put a link in my video description. To get started on fishing, you need to visit Haldor and you're going to want to buy yourself a fishing rod and also some fishing baits. So you'll need 360 coins to get started. I'm giving away free copies of Valheim to my subscribers. Plus, I'm on the road to 100,000 subscribers and then I'd get one of these, which would really mean the world to me. So please do consider subscribing. After that, you just want to walk along the coastline and have a good amount of stamina. And as you can see there, some of the fish will actually jump out of the ocean so you can see where they are. Then with your fishing rod equipped and some fishing bait on you, go ahead and cast it into the ocean. The longer you hold down left click, the further the rod will go. You then just need to keep an eye on the rod and as soon as it bobs downwards, you're going to go ahead and right click to start dragging the fish in. If you get this message that says it's not taking the bait, it means that this species of fish is not attracted to your current type of bait that you are using. So you'll need to unlock more types of bait, which you can do by fishing and as you get more bait, keep catching new types of fish and each time you do, you'll unlock new bait, as you saw from the spreadsheet earlier. And as we see right there, if we start to right click after the bob goes down, then we start to hook the fish and when it gets close, you just press E in order to pick it up. And there we go, we have fish in here right now we have the perch you can see there is a quality rating which is currently two most of the time they will just have a quality of one the quality rating refers to how many fish you can turn these into as you see here you can turn your fish that you have caught into the raw fish over in the cauldron and because it was a quality of two that one perch gave us four of the raw fish these raw fish can then be cooked on a normal cooking station or the iron cooking station if you'd like to the cooked fish can then be combined with barley to make fish wraps in the cauldron and if you catch the angler fish and you can use the chart i put up earlier to do so then this could also be used in the cauldron with the bread dough in order to make the uncooked fish and bread. You then put this into your oven to cook it. This is the new mortar and pestle. It's an upgrade for the cauldron. You can see the crafting recipe for it right here. And by just going to Mistlands and getting some black marble, you can actually get this very early into your Valheim progression. The benefit of this is, of course, it will add a level to your cauldron, meaning you'll be able to get better food earlier on into your game. I've had several people in my comments telling me it's a good idea to fish from a boat. Now, fishing from a boat is definitely possible as the fish come and we hook them in, they will come up onto the boat as you're about to see. So we just keep holding down right click and then we can catch things and there we go, we caught a tuna. And this was done with just the normal fishing bait. The people in my comments have been telling me that when you fish on a boat, you will find that more fish spawn around you as there are more areas for them to spawn. And on top of that, you have more angles around the boat where you can cast off your line in order to catch more fish. So something worth a mention and something you guys may want to try out. The new dungeons can have two different looks to them. They can look like these forts right here, but do be careful, these forts are not always going to be dungeons. I'll explain that in a second. Also, as you can see, there will always be Seeker guarding these forts. But once you've killed the Seeker outside and you head on in, obviously I'm doing this in cheat mode so I don't need to, but you head down these stairs right here. And when you're at the bottom, you'll see an entrance right here to go into the dungeon. If you see a fort that looks like this, it looks very similar, but if we were to head inside, there are no stairs to go down and get into a dungeon, so there's no dungeon here. This is simply a Dwerger fort, and I covered this a lot more in the first part of this tips and tricks video I did. Link to that is in the description. Now this right here is another way and probably a much cooler way that the new dungeons can look. They always have these big jagged stones above them sticking out like that with a big staircase going up to them. I will say all the wisp lights that I've been placed here, I've actually placed these myself so you won't see this in the game. This is just so you can see it because the mist was really rolling in. But pretty self-explanatory, we can run up here and go inside the dungeon this way if we're going into this dungeon. And here we are on the inside of the dungeon guys and this brings me to my first few tips about dungeons. Number one, you can place a campfire inside here and you see you are sheltered so you can get your rested buff by just sitting on the floor for a bit. Now do be careful because as soon as you enter the dungeon you will see right here we could actually fall down like this and there's a lot of these little hidden drops throughout the dungeon. Now I'm in God and Ghost mode so I'm going to show you what would happen if we didn't see this and we ran through. We fall down here. Now this actually isn't too bad. There's a few eggs here that would hatch into secret brutes and things like that but if we were to get a bit more unlucky you could fall down and have a couple of soldiers and seekers and stuff and you'd die straight away. So just be aware of that and jump over it or head around it and go slowly through the dungeons. Now you should approach them with a lot of caution. The mobs here it can be very tricky. We can see just up ahead there is a tick and there's also a seeker just waiting for us. Actually there's a few ticks. So if I weren't in cheat mode what I'd do is just very slowly walk and look ahead and when I see these things I have my bow and arrow ready and start shooting them from as much distance as I could. And you just want to do that and sort of do this dungeon in stages to get a few hits on them and start killing them rather than just going straight into the whole pack. When in the dungeons you can find all kinds of different things. One of them is the royal jelly. So this is where you get royal jelly in the game. When you come up against these things right here you just want to go ahead and smash them and the broods will 
start to spawn from them, but you can get a good few hits and kill them before they start damaging you. And we can get ourselves some more raw jelly this way. If there's some on the floor here that you simply cannot hit, you can either use a hammer to do the AoE damage or use your bow and arrow to shoot them. So you will find seekers, seeker soldiers, seeker broods and ticks in the dungeons and all of these will of course try to attack you. Keep a close eye out for these things right here. As you can see when I look at it, it is actually a hidden door and it has a super cool animation allowing us to come into a loot room. And look at this loot we've got here. We've got some potions here, some meads I should say, a few coins in that one and a bit more of the same in this one. So some awesome loot that we can get from these things. On your way through the dungeon, you may have to slash through a few of these vines, but it's just to say you can definitely get through them, so be aware of that. You can also chop through these doors right here, so they might look blocked off, but if we go ahead and give them a few hits, you'll see they will in fact break open. Sometimes you'll find big chamber rooms like this, and you'll see these things here hanging from the ceiling. Now you see right here, if I go ahead and shoot at one of these just like this, it will actually spawn a seeker brood. But if I just go ahead and make a load of noise here and run around and stuff, these don't actually spawn. So you have to shoot them for these things to actually spawn the broods. If you run by the eggs on the floor here, however, they will hatch. So what you want to do is try and keep your eye out for them ahead of time if they're on the floor, and you can then shoot them before they start to attack you. So if they're high, walk on by, and if they're low, use your bow. That's the way we're going to remember what to do with these things in dungeons. Now inside another hidden door loot room, I found one of these, which is a black core. So this is where we get black cores in the game. They are used in a number of recipes, not least of all the new black forge. So that's how we get those. And inside this treasure chest, I actually found some sausages as well as some other types of mead. And then over here, more mead and gold. So all kinds of dungeon items. I have to say it's really cool that they've added in these new types of dungeon loot that we can now get in the game. Now you may come across one of these in a dungeon, which is a Dwerger metal wall. On the crafting menu, if we go to building, we can see it right here and we can actually build this in the game if we have the Black Forge. However, when you find one in a dungeon, currently you are not able to break this. If I were to use like a pickaxe on this, you'll see it doesn't do any damage at all. Also, if we were to place down a Black Forge nearby, which I'm not sure you can even do, I'm in cheat mode, but basically you still couldn't break it anyway at the moment. And I tried a number of other workstations as well, but basically you can't break through these. So if you had like mobs chasing you through this little corridor and you got to here, you're going to need to turn around and fight them or try to jump over and run away. Another important item you'll find in the dungeon is this right here. And when you see it, you actually need to break it open with a tool. And if you don't miss like I did the first time, then there we go. You'll see there we picked up a seal breaker fragment. And one of the most useful things you'll find in the new dungeons is the location for the new boss, the queen. So we press E there and it will come up and show us on the map exactly where that is. Now this one was actually in behind one of the closed doors. And that's why it's important to keep an eye out for them because you never know what you might find. And these coin piles here instantly can just be picked up, which is pretty awesome. We've got 242 coins there. And then like another 30s, we've got 270 coins just from on the floor in here and a load of black cores and of course the boss. Now, as you'll see here, the seal breaker can be made using the Galda table, but you will need nine of these seal breaker fragments in order to make one. This item is used in order to get to the new boss. As for the Galda table itself, it requires Yggdrasil wood, black metal, black cores and refined iter. You get refined iter from putting sap and soft tissue into the iter refinery, which looks like this right here. And I went into this in more detail in the first part of this 100 tips video. There are some new magical items in the game and they do some really cool attacks. All up, there are four of these new magical items. So let's take a look at how we make them and what each of them does. Now inside the Galda table, we can make a number of things such as the new iter armor. And this gives you plus 100% iter regen when you're wearing a full set, which I'll come on to in a bit. We can also make the feather cape and the seal breaker, but more importantly, we can make the four new magical items. So we have the staff of frost, which when we equip it, we can go ahead and shoot the frost attack at a seeker or of course anything else. We also have the staff of embers and when we go ahead and use that you see we actually shoot fireballs and it does an area of effect attack so it can attack like buildings and things as well as mobs. A new really cool item is the dead razor. Now take a look at my HP you'll see it's at 100 but if I go ahead and conjure this it dropped down to 60 and that's because it takes a percentage of your HP each time. Now if you upgrade the dead razor item using the Galda table and obviously the rune table to upgrade it you can actually spawn two of these guys in at a time. So we've got one, we're going to go ahead and spawn in another one and our health is currently at 87 and there we go, it dropped down to 53. So it's basically 40% of your current HP. So you can't kill yourself with this. If you only had like two HP left, then it'll either use none or one or something, but it won't use both. If I spawn a seeker here, you'll see that these guys will set all that guy's not going to. He's locked over there. That's so awesome. <laughs> but they will basically fight for you as you can see here. So Turid is giving his best attempt. I mean, Lars was trying, got knocked over to here and just fell there. That's awesome. So they're basically here to protect you. And if we go into our current level of skills, here, then you'll see that we have some new skills. The two we're looking at is the blood magic and the elemental magic. Now, as we level up our blood magic, then the damage, iter, and health drain when using blood magic will be less. And the elemental magic, as we level that up, just means we'll do more damage with that elemental magic. Now, there are two blood magic items. One is the dead razor, and when you hover over it, it says you sacrifice a bit 
of blood to raise the dead. The other is the Staff of Protection and says for a slight blood offering, it will protect the caster in a magical shell. Now I've got some tamed animals in here. We've got a lox, there's a little boar under there. We've got the wolf. And of course we have these guys that we just raised, the skeletons. So if I go ahead and equip the Staff of Protection and then left click, then you'll see right here, boom, we all get little shields around us. Oh, I didn't mean to do two. So this is in return for using some of our HP, but basically it will protect you and any tamed animals that are in your area or indeed the skeletons that you raised from the dead. As you'll see in the top right, this magical barrier does have a timer on it, so it will eventually run out. And also, as mobs attack you, it damages the barrier, which will, of course, eventually break. Now, there is a ton of new food in Valheim. Again, I did make a video going into food in detail if you want to see it. But four of the new foods have a new stat to them. So if we hover over these four foods here, you see they have an Ita stat right there. So Mage Caps with an Ita of 25, the Yggdrasil Porridge with an Ita of 20, Stuffed Mushrooms give Ita of 75, and the Seeker Aspect an Ita of 85, making it the strongest food for Ita in the game. So you'll see here that when you go ahead and eat some of these foods that have Ita, you get this purple bar that generates and it works in the same way as stamina in that when you use any magical spell, it'll use up some of your Ita and then that will slowly regen over time. Eventually this will run out and you have to eat more Ita, but yeah, you get the point and that's how we use it in order to do our magical spells. Incidentally, this behind me is something you can make in vanilla with no mods. There's a video on my channel if you guys want to see how to do that. Okay, there is a slight spoiler coming right now, guys, regarding the new Mistlands boss. So if you don't want to see this information, skip ahead about 30 seconds. So if you're still here, these are the two drops that you get from the new boss. The Queen's Drop right there, and also this right here, the Trophy. The Queen's Drop will be made into something useful in the next update, but for now, we're just going to talk about the Trophy. So if we go ahead and hang that at spawn and have a look, you'll see that the new boss ability right here will give you faster mining and also an item regen of plus 100%. So when you're doing your magical spells, if you've got the Queen already dead, then you will be able to get item regen a lot quicker. On top of that, there is a new mead for Ita, which is a minor item mead, and that's the only one in the game right now. As you can see, it requires honey, sap, Jotun puffs, and mage caps. On that, we now also have a major healing mead, which requires blood clot, the raw jelly, and some honey. And also a really cool mead here for lingering stamina, which gives you stamina regen over a longer period of time. This one requires sap, cloudberries, and Jotun puffs. There are a number of items you can place at this time of year for the Yule season. So we got like the Yule tree and presents. There's also the new ones, like the wreath right here, and the sort of ribbon thing here, and even some mistletoe. Now these things do not add to your overall comfort level, but there are other things in the game that do. So if we go in here and get rested, you'll see my comfort there is at level 23. So it used to be a max of 21, now it's 23. So how do we get those extra two levels? Well, you're going to need a blue jute carpet and also a hair rug. Another really cool new item are the two new Dwerger lanterns. So we can see here, you can place them down on the floor just like this, or you can also hang them up on the walls. Let's see, we place that there just like that. You see the recipe for them involves copper and also a chain and a new Dwerger lantern. So let's see how we make that. So you can make the Dwerger Lantern here at a Black Forge. You just need a level one Black Forge with some bronze, certain core and crystal. Now I mentioned this in the part one of this video, but you can hold these things and walk around with them in dark areas like dungeons. And you can also block with them and even parry with them. There are a ton of new build pieces in the game with the Mistlands update, but today we're going to take a look at a few of the more interesting ones. I have covered this in a previous video on my channel in full detail if you want to see it in the Mistlands guide video that I'll link in the description. So the new spiral stairs, which need copper and Yggdrasil wood are really awesome. All you have to do is place them down on top of each other and rotate them round to create a proper spiral staircase in Valheim. And of course, you can then smoothly walk up and down this, which is awesome. This right here is the new Dwerger metal wall. And as you can see, it requires a bit of copper and a black forge to be nearby. And it will look like this. I found this to be particularly cool for windows. As you can see, I've used it here. Some of the new black metal pieces are really awesome as well in the different shapes they have, especially the round shapes, which is quite new to Valheim. But even the arches and these kind of weird triangular sort of shapes, they're pretty cool too. Definitely loving the new stairs as well, and even some of the new dark wood beams that we can put in different orientations. The new stake hall is also very cool, but this one right here might be my favorite new thing. This is the Dwerger stake hall, which requires iron and Yggdrasil wood, but it is super strong. Worth mentioning as well, if you're building in the Mistlands biome, you want to build out a black marble and stuff like this, because it is a lot stronger and will do a lot more protection when the Yala attack it, which they will. There are of course new furniture items and crafting and stuff as well, and one last thing to talk about is the new wall for Dormant, because this is really big and looks really cool. So a great addition you can add to some of your builds. When you see the Dwerger, you see here by sneaking around them, you can actually improve your sneak skill. But the great thing is they will not attack you. So if you really want to just level up your sneak skill in Valheim, you can go ahead and sneak around these and just make sure that you don't hit them or attack their base and your skill will keep improving. Now, if you do decide to take over their base by killing them all, you'll then want to go inside and destroy the ward. Once you've done so, you'll be able to do whatever you want to the base, including opening and closing this amazing new Dwerger door. Now, I did mention this in previous video, but I got 
something wrong. If you want to make repairs in here, then the stone cutter will be useful for a lot of the marble and things like that. However, to repair the door, what you actually need to place down is a black forge, and then you can go ahead and repair the door. So it's the black forge for the door, the stone cutter for most of the other stuff. The dad jokes are coming, but for now, I just want to say, do consider joining my server. Link in description. We're about to launch tomorrow, so it's going to be great fun, and I hope to see you guys there. If you liked today's video, please do consider liking and subscribing, but thank you for watching, and here come the jokes. Ham Sandwich walks into a bar and orders a beer. The bartender says, sorry, we don't serve food here. A cheese factory exploded in France. Debris is everywhere. Did you hear the rumor about butter? Well, I'm not going to spread it. Why do melons have weddings? Well, they can't elope. What does a mobster buried in cement soon become? A hardened criminal.